Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to my freaking video. You guys got the Barkage of the Hidden Games Village here today. Uh, this time for another discussion video. And today uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, Ring Carryover and uh, if it exists. So that basically means does training on rings help you get stronger on other surfaces? And it's an interesting topic because initially you would hear about that and you'd be like, oh yeah, of course it does. Absolutely. But it's interesting because you don't really see people saying that. It's actually quite common for people to have the opinion that training on rings doesn't help at all with <clears throat> other surfaces. So in this video, I figured uh, I've been training with, well, I've been training advanced skills on rings for a little over a month now. When I say advanced skills, that means uh, planche, uh, Maltese, Iron Cross, uh, and other combinations kind of involving those skills. And then I've been training just basic exercises on rings, uh, dips, pull-ups, uh, since about September of this year. So that kind of gives you my experience on rings. Again, I understand it's not it's really not that long, but <clears throat> I figured I'd still make this video anyway. Uh, but yeah, so with that, just keep in mind, guys, with all these discussion videos, I just am speaking from my own uh, personal experience. So um, honestly, guys, I think it kind of just depends on the skill for the most part if uh, it's going to transfer over. I'm going to kind of get into it. I'm going to talk about a bunch of different skills in this video, and uh, if I... Miss the skill for some reason. I mean, there really is. There's so many. So I can tell you right now, I'm not going to touch on all of them. That's the perfect pl time to start uh, the discussion in the comments about the skills that maybe I forgot to mention or just glossed over. So uh, the first skills uh, that I'm going to be talking about are the front lever um, and the back lever. Okay. So uh, due to the fact that these skills are done uh, below the rings, you don't really have to worry about... Um, stabilization or anything like that and also you don't necessarily need a false grip to execute either of these skills so with the skills front lever and back lever on rings they're pretty much the exact same thing as on a bar but it's just like picture the bar is slightly separated <clears throat> and um you might have to deal with a little bit of rocking back and forth when you start but that will go away quickly and that even still that wouldn't really be anything that hinders your ability to <clears throat> hold the move so overall i would say the difficulty is definitely the same for front lever and back lever on the rings and on the bar um and it applies to other front lever skills as well um i've never actually tried front lever pull-ups before but honestly i mean if anything i would assume front lever pull-ups on rings are easier than regular ones just uh again just because the use of the fall script and it, the rings are just a little bit easier to grab and i don't know i've never like i said i've never tried front lever pull-ups on rings i would just assume that they're either the same level of difficulty or possibly a little bit easier okay um <clears throat> so regarding front lever and back lever i would just recommend training on whichever surface you want to be best on. If you want to be really good at front lever and back lever on rings, train them on rings. If you want to be good at front lever on a bar, train front lever, back lever on bar. There's no reason to be like, oh, well, I'm training front lever on rings today so I can do it better on a bar. No, that doesn't really make much sense. I would just do whichever surface you want to work on. So, okay. Next two skills is going to be the muscle up and the festo. So, uh, ring muscle up is actually a lot easier than the bar version. I feel like a lot of people don't know that, but it is true. Uh, one, uh, the rings, there's two rings, right? So you can just, you can just pull and then throw your body through the rings to get up and over on a bar. You can't do that. You actually have to get up high enough, clear the bar and then go over for the rings, you don't have to do that. You can kind of just, you can just pull a little bit and then zing your head through the rings and uh, you will be, you'll be over the bar. So uh, train whichever muscle up you want. Like I said, again, it, this is kind of the vibe for most ring skills. It's like whichever surface you want to be best on, just train on that surface. So 
Ring Hefesto is the next one I'm going to be talking about. So Ring Hefesto is just a little bit different than the bar version. Uh, there's been people that have asked me about Ring Hefesto in the comments. There's actually one person who I've been meaning to make a Ring Hefesto video for, but I just haven't really... Um, I mean, by the time I'm like out on rings, I'm always doing like uh, planche, multis, and uh, all these other skills, so I don't really uh, have the energy for <coughs> uh, Ring Hefesto. But anyway, yeah, uh, I probably will be doing a Ring Hefesto video shortly, but uh, yeah, keep that in mind. So, Ring Hefesto, a little bit different than the other one, so uh, I'm going to explain kind of a little demo here. I'm just trying to make some room for that. So, they're different with the Hefesto. You're on a bar, your hand, it's going to be fully supinated. I don't know if you guys can see me, but like this, you're going to be fully supinated. On rings, this is not going to be the case. On rings, your hand, I don't even know what this position is called, but fully supinated on a bar right here. Rings are going to be more out. Your hands are going to be more turned out to the side like this for ring hefesto. Okay? So, because of that... I honestly think that Ring Hefesto is a little bit easier than the straight bar. They're just different moves. So because of the way the grip is, I feel like initiating the Hefesto itself is easier than on a bar. And for bar Hefesto, one of the most common things that people have issues with is initiating the pull. And on rings, that's honestly just easier. The only thing that's different is, of course, the transition on rings, which is more challenging because that's when you have to start dealing with stabilizing <clears throat> the rings and everything like that. So uh, with Hefesto, again, <laughs> it's the same thing. If you want to get good at Hefesto on a bar, train Hefesto on a bar. If you want to get good at Hefesto on rings, train Hefesto on rings. There's no reason to work ring Hefesto and say, oh, well, I'm doing this ring Hefesto so I can get better at the bar Hefesto. No, that doesn't make any sense. They're completely different at the beginning of the skill. So you're going to want to work on, uh, you're going to want to work and train them on a bar. If that makes sense. So again, still similar, but they are, it, it's just different with the way the starting grip is much easier, in my opinion, to start the pull on the ring. So pretty cool with the Festo there. <clears throat> Moving on, Victorian, that's going to be the next one that we're going to be tackling. Um, the reason why, well, never mind. <laughs> you know what I was about to say. So uh, anyway, uh, yeah, Victorian is the next skill. Uh, as you guys know, uh, Victorian has kind of been my side hustle for uh, about, I would say, like since May. And uh, so recently, I have finally have, have had the confidence to attempt the Victorian on rings. And uh, with this, it's a little different because with ring Victorian, you do, you have to deal with keeping the ring stable while you're holding it. And the rings have, there's a lot less surface area on the rings to grab onto as compared to most of the parallel bar setup. So I feel like training Victorian on rings can definitely help P-Bar Victorian. Uh, the only thing is I actually have not actually tried <laughs> parallel bar Victorian since I started attempting the Victorian on rings. And that's just because I obviously want to have save all that energy for ring Victorian attempts. So again, I haven't tried parallel bar parallel bar Victorian in a while now and I don't know when I'm ever going to be trying it again I because I'm kind of focused on getting getting it on rings obviously so because that's what I do too but I, if I want to get on something on rings I train it on rings so yeah um, anyway guys the final skill that we're going to be talking about um, on this video is going to be the planche and Maltese now Obviously, I know that they're not the same skill. They're just super similar. So I figured for the sake of time of the video, I figured I would just group them together. Uh, so I'm mainly going to be talking about planche, but keep in mind, pretty much everything I say for planche <clears throat> can uh, apply to Maltese as well. And I want you guys to keep in mind that I, I don't train ring planche to help myself get better at floor or parallettes or straight bar. I train ring planche in Maltese because I want to be able to do the Van Gelder and Zanetti skills. So obviously I need to get better at planche and Maltese on rings 
to be able to execute those. <clears throat> okay, but regardless, I have still noticed that when I do train on the other surfaces, uh, parallel bars, straight bar, floor, I have noticed I've no I've noticed improvements for sure, honestly, and I'm gonna get into that. So <clears throat> one thing with ring planche, it puts a lot more pressure on your joints and tendons than the regular one. So this can of course strengthen <clears throat> strengthen your joints and tendons, condition them better for planche. So when you move on to uh, surfaces that put less pressure on those areas, you're gonna be stronger. Also, um, and this is just kind of something that I've experienced and it kind of becomes second nature, but when you are in ring planche, uh, in order to keep them stable, I notice that I tend, that I actively will move my hands throughout the hold to keep the ring stable. So <clears throat> when I planche on a stable surface, I obviously don't have to worry about trying to keep that surface stable like when i'm on p bars i don't have to worry about the parallel bars moving i can just focus on holding the planche itself um so yeah i would say for that reason definite carryover for me at least in planche and maltese and i think it's interesting because there still are people that say rings don't really help so i'm going to try to maybe present an argument for why that is um maybe it's like if you are someone who only has ever trained on rings like a gymnast or something and then you try to move to another surface i can see why that would probably be a little bit more challenging but i still don't see why you wouldn't be able to pick up on it quickly because i mean if, if you look at me right i didn't train ring planche at all really until like the beginning of june and even still like we we, we can all admit i sucked at it at first but in like two weeks or whatever, I was able to do it pretty well. And now I can hold it written. Now, now I sound like good. At, I'm like good at it and really comfortable. I just got to get better at, uh, I just got to get better at my multis now on rings. And then, then we can start going for the, the advanced skills. But yeah, so I don't see why a, a, a gymnast who's been training on rings most of their life when they move to floor or parallettes for planche, I don't see why they wouldn't be able to pick up on it quickly. I mean, it's still planche at the end of the day. So I would say for the most part, as a consensus, I would say, yes, there is carryover from rings to other skills when it comes to planche. <clears throat> but for the most part, I would say just train on whichever surface you want to be best at. Okay. Um, and anyway, guys, uh, yeah. So with that, uh, that's pretty much all I have for this video. Uh, definitely feel free to leave your thoughts on this down below as well as some other topics that you'd like to see discussed on the channel. Uh, of course, be sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces.